Mark Young has an Excel VBA question on the businessprogrammer.com blog. Mark wanted to know how to select or get a reference to the last data row in an Excel range of cells so that he could apply some custom formatting to those cells. In this tutorial, you can look over my shoulders as I tackle that problem and see me make a mistake and try to recover from it with my pride intact. Enjoy. What's going to happen here is that Mark will be adding a new rows onto the bottom of this particular data range. So let's just assume that row 14 has just been added to the data range by Mark. He wants to be able to press a button or have some code run that will automatically format each of just the bottom row cells. Okay, so what we're going to do is see how I solve this problem or solve this problem together as if I can hear you. Um, but yeah, let's let's do this. So step one is um, let's pull up the VBA editor and I so did not pull up the VBA editor there. Alt F11 gives me the VBA editor. So first of all, let's get us a standard module. So insert module. So make sure option explicit is switched on. This is done by making sure that you've done tools, options, and that require variable declaration is clicked prior to adding your module. If you've got a module that's already added, just type in option explicit at the top of your module. That's required for good coding practices. It forces you to declare all your variables first, which is a good way of avoiding bugs. Let's create a subroutine called format last row. So sub format last row. I'm going to create a couple of variables. Um, these are going to be range variables. So what I want to do initially is I'm going to create a variable that basically references this particular highlighted range. Then what I'm going to do is using sort of object principles, I'm going to ask the range, hey, how many rows do you have? And the answer to that in this instance would be 14 rows. But then I'm going to say, give me a new range reference, which is just one row high. And then offset that by the amount of rows in the range, which will take you to there, minus one, which will take you to there. So that's what we're going to do. And then when I've done that, I'm going to do something called, I'm going to create a loop which is called a for each next loop, which is effectively an iterator. And it's just going to iterate over each of these cells in the range. Question though is, okay, so I'm iterating over each of these cells, but how do I know which cell I'm in at any particular time so that I can put a custom formatting on? Well, in order to do that, we're going to use something called intersect. So what I'm effectively going to do is get the intersection of this cell here, which is going to be a vertical column, and of the top row. And the point of intersection in this instance is going to be E1. So with cell E1, what's the value of it? If the value is description of transaction, then we know we're in this cell. If the value were to be deposit, then we know we're in this cell. And based on that, we can give, we can apply custom formatting for each of these cells. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so I'm not going to actually use range cell.select. I'm just using it for demonstration purposes. And when the code goes live, we won't be selecting any cells because you know I love selecting cells. So let's see what we've got first. Let's just step through the code. So we've declared our three range variables. Now I'm going to get a reference to range data. And just so you know what range data is, let's have a look at it. It's that. Now I'm going to create range header. Let's get rid of this blue highlighting because it's kind of ruining the whole effect that I want. So let's select range header. Oh, you see, I've just learned something here. We've just dealt with 
a mistake. The data here starts the first thanks mark, the first two rows are hidden. So let's see what pesky mark has been hiding in those first two rows. Oh, Mark, you devil, you. Okay, let's start at the beginning again. So what I would, this indicates something that is um, important when you're designing your spreadsheets. Your data areas, which, I mean, this is a, a pretty good data area in the way it's laid out. You've got a header, which is like a database. A database table has headers. And you have your columns of data. And for example, in a database, each row represents a record and each column represents is a field or, or a property of that data. But in order to also make it easier to work with your macros, etc., in a spreadsheet, don't have anything touching your data that is not part of your data table. So in this instance, we've got these X's here touching the data. Well, what does that mean, you might ask? Okay, what it means is if I do the equivalent of F5, which is go to, and then I choose special current region and click OK, you see areas outside of the data range are selected. We don't want that. So what I'm going to do is in this instance, I am going to insert the blank row here. OK, so now what we can say is that the data range starts at A4. Let's go back now and adjust the macro. So here we go. Instead of starting at A1, we start at A4. You know, I could have edited out this error, but I think it's more instructive to leave the error in because in reality, this is the kind of stuff you're going to come up against when you're programming and developing macro solutions. So I select this cell and then I do Control F9 and the VBA cursor goes back to that position and I'm going to rerun this code. So here we go, range data. So now I select range data. That's better. So range data. So if we click on range data, that's select. You see now the data range is selected. We now do range header by executing that line of code. And I click on it in the immediate window. There's range header, nice and clear. And now let's execute on range last row. And let's have a look at what that looks like. Okay, so we've got our reference to the last cell. Now let's iterate over each cell in the range. So you see, as I iterate over it, each cell is being selected. Now we don't use select, as you know, but I'm just showing you that we can get a handle on it. So that's, and then when it's iterated over each cell, it exits the loop. You see, finished, though we're not finished. So now what we gotta do is we've got to uniquely identify each of these cells. So what I'm going to use for that is a VBA select case statement. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first of all get the value of the intersect. So here we go, let's just see what I'm talking about intersect range header with range cell dot entire column. So that basically says get range cell, get the entire column of that cell going vertically. So it intersects with the header and get the value of that. So intersect range header and range cell dot entire column. Now, this is why it's useful to understand objects in Excel or VBA because the result of the intersect function is a range object, okay? So one of the properties of a range object is you can get its value, so dot value. So intersect range header dot value, okay? So what I'm gonna, so that is going to actually give you the value of the cell. So what I'm going to do is select case and to make things simple I want the value of the cell to be all in 
I can say uppercase because most of it is uppercase. I could also say lowercase, but I'm going to go with uppercase in this instance. So here we go. Normally one would go with lowercase, but you know, seeing as the headers are mainly uppercase, I'll do that. And now I need to put in the end select. And just in case um, one of these isn't working properly, we're going to put in a case else, which is effectively a kind of an error condition. So if the month is chosen, we want blue. Now you can put any format in currency or whatever, but just for the sake of this, I just want to get through it relatively quickly. Let's run this macro and see where we're at. Should I say, let's run this bad boy. And let us put in a breakpoint here. So let's hit run. And let's just step through it. So if we look at this intersect function that I've created, let's go to the immediate window and type a question mark because I want the results. So you can test a lot of your code in the immediate window. So now if I click, we want the intersect of range header and range cell dot entire column. So let's just uh, do that. And you can see it's month. And for example, if I had chosen to use lowercase in stuff, I could have just wrapped it in an L case function and then it would have come back as lowercase month. But right now we're using uppercase month. So what you can see is we are in the for each next loop. So for each range cell, which is a variable that's created in order to iterate over this loop in, so for each range cell, the iterator variable in range last row. So what's happening right now is this cell on each iteration of the loop is going to move like that. It's not actually, the cursor is not moving, but the reference to the cell is moving. And so that, for example, if I go into the immediate window and type range, cell dot select not that we want to select it it selects january okay so rain cell points to this january cell which is in this instance cell a15 so let's just go through it so it set the interior to blue let's go through so now it's in date cat and what's going to happen oh it's set it to red my goodness me and now, actually, just to prove a point, we don't need this select any longer. And now, oh, the next one's gone to green. And now we're in the date. What's the date going to become? Could it be that it's going to be bold? Yes. And that's it, basically. So if I just let it run, there you go. Finished. We've got the... We have, we've got that last element being bold. We've got debit card being in red, withdrawals in red, balance in bold, and the dates in green. That's it. We have, in this particular piece of code, we have found the last cell in the range by making sure we organize our data perfectly, which is basically you create a table like here, and you don't have the table touching any other cells because that muck, mucks up the equivalent of, of select special current region, which you can access by control asterisk on your keyboard or control asterisk, whichever way you want to put it. Um, so if I just press the control key and the asterisk key, bang, we've got it there. So if you'd like to get this spreadsheet with this macro code, get over to businessprogrammer.com forward slash go forward slash one zero four and you will be forwarded on to the actual web page 
where you can download this spreadsheet with this sample data and with the code. Hope this answered your question, Mark. Bye for now. You can get the spreadsheet and code that goes with this tutorial at businessprogrammer.com forward slash go forward slash 104. And hey, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.